All right, major education reforms are planned for Connecticut this year. We're here with Michael Sharp, the CEO, president of Jamoki Academy, one of the fastest rising charter schools in Connecticut in Hartford. Patrick Rickards, the new CEO, president of ConCan, and advocacy group out here, new to the job. Welcome, guys. Uh, let's talk about the race to the top, one of my favorite topics. Race to the top. <laughs> You have in Connecticut the widest academic achievement gap in America. Race to the top, earmark for those states that need help in closing the gap. And not once, not twice, three times, Connecticut has not been able to compete for those dollars. What is going on? Why? Well, <laughs> let's cut and, cut and be real with you. Yes. What's going on here? Well, I, I think that, that Connecticut has had a problem in, in um, identifying those educational re reform things that need to be done to, uh, to, to give signal to Washington that we're serious about reforming education in Connecticut, is closing it, the achievement gap. Is it a problem identifying it or pulling the trigger and enacting it? I think we all know by now, the, 10, the, 20 years, the, what the, needs the, to be done. The last time I was on this show, Stan, I said it was a lack of political will. And that has been the issue. And uh, the, the, the governor, um, Malloy, um, has come forward um, with a force that I've not seen to date saying that education is a number one priority. If he sticks with that agenda and that force, I think we're going to see some changes. Great. I think that's absolutely right. I mean, for too long we've lived with our head in the sand and we've wanted to ignore what the problems were here in Connecticut. And now we're finally getting the sense that we have to wake up and do something about it. You know, if you look at those three strikes we've had in Race to the Top, mm -hmm. you know, first strike, we never even took the bat off our shoulder. I and mean, we submitted an application with more than 120 blanks on it because we just didn't want to be bothered with having to get the answers. You know, second time around, we tried a little bit better. The legislature tried to make some steps. But Dr. Sharp's absolutely right. What happened was we weren't doing any of the things that they expect to see states who are serious about improvement do. All we could do were make some empty promises. Is it about being afraid to rankle the union? Because when you say that the, the empty blanks and sort of the trepidation there, someone's afraid to ruffle some feathers. So is it kind of, you, you guys have all heard the same talk. Is it really, has it been about for the last 20 years not trying to ruffle the feathers of the, of the union and just standing back and letting this continue to go on? Change is hard. And when we look at something as hard as changing our schools, it gets really, really hard. And so, as, you know, we take a step back and we say, what is it that we have to do? And we see that for decades now, our focus in public education has been about the adults in the room. What we finally are starting to hear, what the governor has said both in his six principles last month and then this month as he's really started to ratchet up the talk about ed reform, is we are finally shifting that focus where we're talking about the kids. We're talking about outcomes. We're talking about the impact on our students. And this is not going to be an adult game this year. We also know reading, you guys know the same thing here too, that the most important thing to closing this gap are reading scores by the third or fourth grade, right? It's been said time and time again. It seems fairly simplistic. Why wouldn't the state or any state marshal most of its resources toward getting those third grade scores on par. In fact, I'm hearing that some states now are not going to pass students in the third grade if they don't have their reading score on par. What about that? Why aren't we just throwing a massive amount of resources, not necessarily money, but effort and energy toward getting those scores on par at third grade? I, I think part of the problem in, in Connecticut is how you throw that money at the resources. Um, there, there are so many, uh, the, the funding system in Connecticut is broke. And there's a ECS task force. How so? If they broke it for laymen out there, would, why is it broken? Well, it, it, there's not fairness um, and, and emphasis in funding those those schools, those districts, those children that need the dollars. And so you have this sort of convoluted uh, method of how districts and schools get their monies in towns, and it's not fair. One district could be spending as much as twenty-two thousand dollars right. per child, and another district spending twelve thousand. But the twelve thousand they need to be spending the 21. So back to the point, we have about three minutes left. So how do we put a, a real effort, a real effort on third grade? Because that's part of the reform plan the governor's thrown out there is to really have better access to high quality early childhood education. What does that really mean? I think it means one, we have to, we have to make an investment in preschool. We have to make sure that, that before they get to kindergarten, teachers, we, mean, need, we need effective programs that are focused on instruction. Preschool can't simply be babysitting, which is what it is far too often. Then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have effective teachers in every classroom, effective principals leading every school. You know, only then, and then we have to make sure that we're getting 
the equity in terms of funding that Dr. Sharp is talking about. With that, we can actually do something with this because you're absolutely right. You know, at the end of the day, third grade reading, if we look at the number of kids in this state who are less than proficient in third grade reading, it's about equal to what our high school dropout rate is. In about 90 seconds, would you agree with a policy where you would not pass a child who does not meet third grade reading standards? Is that too draconian or is that something to consider? Well, I, I think what, I don't think it's draconian, but I think that there's no reason for a third grade child not to have learned how to read. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look at who is teaching or not teaching the children rather than keeping the children back. All right, the other elephant in the room. Let's look at some of the bullet points from Deborah Malloy's proposal. You mentioned the, the, the teaching issue, which is now to put an emphasis on quality and performance, not on tenure. I mean, a, a, a poor teacher is the elephant in the room, and that if you have a great teacher and a poor teacher, as far as compensation, there's not much different there, right? So the, the poor teacher ends up languishing and compromising the program. How do you get rid of poor teachers or train them where they're good teachers in about 30 seconds? We need to evaluate every single public school teacher in Connecticut, and we need to evaluate them every single year. We don't do that right now. We then need to use those evaluations the other thing is we need to look at administrators. The administrators are responsible for making sure they're effective teachers. So if the administrators aren't working, then the teachers aren't working. So I think we need to make sure we start with the administrators. They say where you find a good school, a great school, you'll find a great uh, principal. Fair yeah, to say? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Quickly, about uh, 30 seconds again. More, more 30 seconds. <laughs> um, awarding good schools and punishing bad schools, maybe punishing the poor word to use, but awarding good schools, duplicating success, and having more interventions at poor schools. Let's talk about how do you make that happen. I think, what, I think what you need to do is when we recognize those schools that are truly doing well, the way we reward them is we start lifting some of the red tape that they have to deal with. Leave them free to do what they do best. Getting resources. Exactly. Getting... And then with those schools that are struggling, our lowest performing schools, we need to get them more resources. And we need to get them the resources so they can make specific improvements. And then we need to incentivize them when they do improve. We need to reward them when they do demonstrate success. That red tape is a huge problem. Ten seconds. That red tape is an interesting problem because it's there. It also compromises learning when you can't get computers in the classroom, when you can't get them fixed, when you can't get things going. It sets the agenda backwards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Guys, we'll continue to have you on. We have Patrick Rickards, Concan. Uh, Michael Sharp from Jamoki. When we come back, folks, we'll have beat writers for UConn men and women's basketball team. How are they doing a year after losing a major star from their roster? Remember, catch us 24-7 online, ctnow.com slash Dan. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We'll be back. Don't go away.